Hi, it's Mike Thornton from Pro Tools Expert. In podcast 85, we talked about some issues with regard to delay compensation. One of our community members sent in a question about delay compensation with predominantly a MIDI session. And we also discussed in podcast 85 an issue that a friend of Mike Ayton, this is George, who was also having some problems with what appeared to be delay compensation not working correctly. Now, George has sent me a session, and sure enough, I could reproduce the issue on my Pro Tools system. So we then sent it on to Simon Sherborne at Avid UK, and he went to work on it, and we have an answer. So I thought it would be easier to show it to you in video form. This is the original problem. We have two audio tracks here, and that one of those is routed through this bus onto the Vox bus. The other one goes, this one here, goes straight through to the sound effects bus. And what happens is, obviously, with no plug-in in, I've got the same audio on both these tracks, so it should play perfectly well and have no phasing problems and just be louder. So if we just play one of them. About four years ago. I'm and then we play the other one. About four years. So now play them both together and it should just sound absolutely fine, but just a little bit louder. About four years ago, I moved over from the UK. Which it does. However, now see what happens when I put in a DSP plug-in. So we just put a standard EQ3, it's completely flat, there's no EQ, and you'll notice here that we're getting a certain amount of delay showing up in the delay compensation. It's yellow because it's the largest delay, and now take a listen to that. About four years ago, I moved over from the UK, and it's starting to phase. What baffled George is he then converted it to native. So same plugin, all I've done is to convert it to native. And we play it again. About four years ago, I moved over from the UK. And all the phasing has gone. You'll notice here that all the delay compensation has uh, gone green. So there's no issue. So it appeared as though the delay compensation wasn't functioning correctly with DSP plugins. So that was the problem that we set Simon Sherborne. And Simon took a look at it and came back with the answer, which is certainly has raised an issue that I wasn't aware of. Now, Pro Tools is actually working exactly the way it was designed. But the reason it appears to be a problem is because of all these other tracks. And also the fact that in this session we are feeding record enabled audio tracks and so when you get these cascading routing then there can be an issue because the way Pro Tools is designed is when you put tracks into record enable and if we have a look in the manual so if I go into the Pro Tools online manual just hide the plugin for a moment the default setting in Pro Tools disables the delay compensation on the audio tracks, these tracks here that we're listening through in input only mode. It disables the delay compensation on the audio tracks that are in this input monitoring because the designers of Pro Tools made the valid assumption that you would want the lowest latency path when recording, especially for music work. And then when you come to play the project back, the delay compensation in playback mode will handle the offsets correctly. So when you play it back, everything will be absolutely in sync. But whilst you're recording, Pro Tools by default will give you the lowest latency path unless you choose otherwise. And so what you can do is if you have a track like this in input monitoring, if you right click here on the delay compensation section, I can now turn the auto low latency mode off. And so I can do that with both those tracks. And so now with the plugin, if I put it back into DSP, you can see that the compensation is functioning here and compensating for that change. So if I now play the audio with the auto latency turned off. About four years ago, I moved over from the UK it's absolutely fine. So if I just 
put the low latency mode back on again. About four years ago. It's phasing. But as soon as I turn off the low latency mode, the compensation is now fully functioning, both in record and input monitoring. About four years ago, I moved over from the UK. And it all works fine. Now, why did it appear to work when I changed the plugin to native? Well, the reason this all works is because the plugin here is in fact introducing a delay that is less than the hardware buffer size. If we'd have chosen a different plugin, say the Maxim limiter, which is a look ahead limiter, you can see here that there is an awful lot of delay taking place. About four years ago, I moved over from the UK. And indeed you can hear it. And in fact, if I now turn this to native, you'll see that there's still a significant amount of delay. About four years ago. We still get that delay flanging sound from the audio. About four years ago, I moved over from the U. So it was just fortunate that the plugins that George chose were plugins with a latency or a delay that was less than the hardware buffer size on the system. And then with that in native mode, everything all panned out. So if I now go back to the Maxim and we About get the delay, ago. I now can turn the auto latency off. About four years ago, I moved over from the UK. And it all works absolutely fine. So as the manual suggests, if you're using these cascaded recording buses to multiple tracks, then it is recommended that you override the low latency monitoring. So that's one answer to use this override. The other option would have been to use AUX inputs for all the stems and then bus the outputs of those stems to final record tracks that are not in the monitor path. So that way the delay compensation is applied as long as the ADC is active. So you've two choices. You either use AUX input tracks to create your stems and then bus those to record tracks which aren't in the monitor path. That's the key part of that. Or you can work as this session is and then just turn off as I have here the auto latency and you can see that the delay compensation turns blue. So thanks to George for raising the problem and thanks to Mike Hazen for bringing it to our attention and to Simon's attention and thank you Simon for getting to the bottom of it and showing us two ways of resolving this issue. See you again soon.